One more hand for the Lord. Let's praise him. He's the Savior. He's the one that delivers. He's the one that sets people free. It's his power. It's his love. He first loved us. He's the hope. Come on. He's the hope for every one of us. He's the hope for your marriage. He's the hope. Come on. He's the hope for your finances. He's the hope for your eternal life. I'm so glad to see every one of you here, and I feel like I'm in the glory of God because of all the fog that's in here. I guess that's how I know how Moses felt when he went into the glory. But, but um, we'll ignore the fog and focus on me. But I want to let you know I love you. God loves you. And this is the truth. As we follow Jesus and get through the obstacles, the difficulties, because this is a fight of faith. How many understand that? It, it doesn't say it's a walk of faith only, but it's a fight of faith. And that means if you're in a fight, there's somebody that's actually trying to beat you up or conquer you. And I think after we come to Jesus, when we start getting some resistance, we start thinking, well, is this God's will? You join an army, you're in a fight. And everything that's going to be worthwhile in your life is going to come with a fight. So we need to learn how to fight. Whether it's family being saved, you, you're, you're overcoming an addiction, or you want your marriage to be restored, or you want to get involved in ministry, there will be a fight. And we're here not only to fight, but we're here to win. And this is what the Bible says. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ. Come on. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ. You know what God is saying? That whatever battle that you're facing right now, it's not meant to defeat you. It's not meant, come on, it's not, it's not meant to overpower you. God is saying, I'm putting you in this fight to win, but your faith is going to be in me. Your faith is not going to be in your money. Your faith is not going to be in a doctor's report. Your faith is not going to be in people, but it's going to be in me because you're more than a conqueror through Christ who strengthens you now. I want you to think about this. Christ is still strengthening people. And I, and I think sometimes we think it's weak to admit you're weak. It's not weak to admit, admit you're weak. You're strongest when you admit you're weak because you're dependent on his strength. Does anybody need some help? Come on, with your family, with your life, with your future, with your ministry, with the vision. It's a fight, but you win. I'm ready to do 18 more years of fighting for souls, for purpose, for victory, for love. Come on, these are things I gotta fight for. Proud of you, of every one of you here. Um, Sunday, I mean tomorrow, let's talk about tomorrow. Tomorrow, this is a three-day three, three day event. Someone say three days. After three days, it was a resurrection. This is all God is saying. If you're ever going to see some big breakthroughs in your life, you're going to have to go through process. Someone say process. This is not a one-day event. This is a three-day celebration. Why three days? It's going to take three days of saturating ourselves with the Word of God to get the vision, come on, to get the breakthrough that God has for us. This is not one dose fixes you. We got some big problems, and, and this, is, this is the idea. This world is saturating us with all kinds of wrong media agendas and, and information. And this is time for us to saturate ourselves. It's called a consecration to hear from God. Every night is going to be full in this place. Uh, Thursday night, tomorrow is going to, I mean, today's going to be great. Tomorrow's going to be greater. Friday's going to be, come on, greater. It's, there's going to be a flow of what God is doing. Isaiah Saldivar is coming also on Friday. 
And I'm telling you, he's pushing it heavy. You're going to have to come early to get a seat. He has a million followers right now combined with Facebook and, uh, and, and, and YouTube. So right, and he's pushing our church seriously. So you guys have to understand, let's make sure our church gets here, you. Get your seat early. Also, tomorrow night, come on, reserve your seat right now. It's my seat right now. Reserve it. Well, who to reserve it with yourself? Reserve your seats right here. That's where I'm sitting, right here. I'm not going to let nobody steal my blessing. Come on. I'm not going to let nobody steal my blessing. Um, a big part of getting a blessing is proximity. Someone say proximity. There's some breakthroughs you can't get over the internet. You're going to have to come in per, per come on. You're going to have to come in person to get a breakthrough. You might, you, you, you got to fight to get in the presence of God. Do everything you can and let God do the rest. We're preparing for the greatest move of God in your life. We're preparing for the greatest miracles in our church. We're preparing for something great. Not only here, right now in San Bernardino, but in our Arrowhead campus, our Pomona campus. We're ready to launch our Compton campus, our Arrow, come on, our Arizona campus, our TJ, come on, our Tijuana campus. We got Luis and Abigail, the pastors for Tijuana. They're here right now. Let's give them a hand. They're, they're, they're going out and doing outreach every single day. They're visiting all the hospitals. The way we're all outreach is in TJ strong right now. We're seeing people get healed, set free, saved, and discipled. Right now, the way Kenya, come on, we just built a church. We built a church. Come on, we built a church. They're having church right now. We just acquired a women's home to pull prostitutes off the streets. We have an orphanage. Come on. We have an orphanage right now in Kenya. And this September, we're going to be launching. We just built a school in Kenya so poor little boys and little girls can come to a Christian school. Let's give the Lord a hand. And we're just starting. This is really important. You got to be aware. Someone say, you got to be aware. You could be in the presence of a move of God and not see it. There's such thing as spiritual blindness that you can't see the fog through the fog, no pun intended, <laughs> and see what God is doing. There are two groups of people in this room. There are those that are looking for Jesus and they're going to find him. There are others that are looking, they're looking to criticize and they're going to find that. Be careful that while Jesus is healing, you're judging. Because you can miss the whole thing. I'm just saying, you can miss the whole thing. I am not here to judge you. I'm here, come on, I, I'm here to realize I need some help. I need a breakthrough. Come on, I need some love. I need some improvement. I need a miracle. I need a touch from God. Is there anybody else here that's saying, I'm, I'm just focused on Jesus today? Okay. Um, so Sunday, Ivan Tate's going to come and give some prophetic words to our church. I'm going to really have him focus on prophesying to our church. And then... And, but Sunday also, we're finally releasing the book Guaranteed Growth. Now, I need your help. We want to make it an Amazon bestseller. So, so how do we do that? All of us buy it online at once. We could be the bestseller for an hour. One hour, we could be the best-selling book in the whole world. Come on, we all get together. Can you guys help me with the one hour? That we all download the book and say, man, what's going on with Guaranteed Growth? They just went, it went off the charts. What happened? We're number one bestseller in Amazon, right? We, so I need your help on that. And then you can buy a book, a physical book. Let's buy an online book and let's buy a physical book on Sunday. Please, let's do everything we can uh, because this is what we're doing. I believe that book is going to, I went to Hawaii and I taught a little bit on the book and I got pastors from all over the world that bought the book and they're calling me almost every single week and they're saying, I'm reading the chapter, I'm reading the second chapter, it's changing my life, I need mentoring. 
and there's people going to come into they're going to come into the church because that right now the book is in Poland. The pastors they, we right now we 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 took the book to Poland. People are right now finding out how to get guaranteed growth in their churches. What we need right now is on fire churches with some wisdom that are carrying God's love and his power. How many believe that God wants this DNA to flow into churches all over the world? Not that we're the best, but there's something God is doing right here that he wants to spread to other nations. Come on, to other churches. This is what God is doing. So get ready for that. So this book is really strategic. It's the DNA of our church. And it goes over eight principles to have guaranteed growth in your life, in your ministry, and in your church, which is some real principles of God that unlock growth in your life. How many want to see growth in your life? So get ready. Get rooted. Get planted. Be consistent. And watch God do something in your life. Saint is a distractor. Don't get distracted in this season. I'm telling you, do not get distracted in this season. The miracle is right here in your house. The miracle is right here. Come on, right here, right here. God's doing something right here, right now in this season. Give God some praise if you believe that prophetic word. God's ready to do something greater than ever. All right. All right, I gave a little time for the fog to clear, but I don't know if it's going to get clear up. Someone just breathe in some fog so we could get it out of here. And I'm just going to... Love you guys. We're going to pray right now. I'm going to read a word. Tonight's word, I don't have any notes. That's not, I'm not preaching from notes tonight. Uh, but God gave me a portion of scripture, and I'm going to go through it verse by verse. And in this portion of scripture, if there's a, if there's a statement, if there's a title of what God is saying, is this. This is your moment. This is our moment. And we're going we're gonna to go through a portion of Scripture and we're going to see a miracle, of a, a, a supernatural miracle of a man. And that was his moment. But God is also saying right now, this is your moment. And we're going to receive what God is saying prophetically. And then we're going to act on this. And we're going to see God do what he does when we receive his word. How many understand God does it when we receive his what? Just because God's word's being spoken and his presence and his power is available doesn't mean that you get a breakthrough. You get a breakthrough and you get a miracle and you are saved when you hear the word and you receive it for yourself. Right now, I know you wish somebody else was here, but I'm glad you're here. I'm here. I'm present in this moment, and I'm going to receive what God has for me. Where we're allowed reach, I'm proud of you. We've done a lot. And these next six months, the first six months, we've been just preparing ourselves through discipleship and praying, and we've done some fasting, and, and we've, we've, we've been done doing some organizing. But the next six months, we are going to bombard this city and bombard this world with the presence of God. Come on. With, come on, with the message of God, everybody's going to know who Jesus is. Come on, in the Inland Empire, they're going to know who the way we're allowed reach is because I believe there's a place that many have to come. Lisa got a prophetic word the other day. Lisa, come up here real quick. Where is she at? Let's bring my better half up here. I can't see her. She's coming out of the glory right now, Mount Zion up there. Well, there she is. Oh, wow. What is this? Oh, it's an angel? Oh, no, it's Lisa. What is the word that God gave you the other day you were, you were sharing about growth? Okay. So I, I was praying and God just stopped me in the middle of my prayer. And he showed me that there's going to be an influx of so many people. And at that moment, it became a weight on me that was just overwhelming and I said, oh, my God, we have to take care of these people that are coming. They're coming. And they're coming to get to know Jesus. And we have to be the representatives. And we have to take them and take care of them. What would you do with your own little child, your own little baby? Or even somebody else's baby. They said, can you please take care of my baby? I have an emergency. And they drop it off. It's your responsibility all of a sudden. And God said... 
I'm sending them, I'm sending them, I'm sending them to TJ, I'm sending them downtown, I'm sending them to Arizona, I'm sending them to Kenya, I'm sending them to the Way World Outreach. Please take care of my sheep, take care of my lambs. So it's our job, we gotta do this. Awesome, are you guys ready? Come on, are you guys ready for an influx of souls? Come on, that's your family, that's your mama, that's your daddy, that's your uncle, that's your neighborhood, that's your city that's coming in. They, they look like they would never come and God is saying, this is the season that I'm gonna release them because there's a church that's ready to take care of them. We want them, God wants them, but God says, it's gonna take some responsibility though. We're gonna have to give them time, effort, and care. If we love Jesus, take care of my sheep and feed them, love them, and that's how you love me. Right? Awesome. Let's pray. Let's pray, Lisa. Father, we just thank you for 18 years of ministry that you've prepared us for this moment. Esther, when she was raised up as queen, the scripture said, for such a moment as, as this, all the preparation, all the warfare, all the resistance was for this moment. You've prepared us for worldwide ministry and we're stepping into the higher levels of warfare, higher levels of responsibility, and higher levels of commitment. We thank you, Lord, that we'll not get distracted. Help us. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. Fill us with your power. Fill us with your love. Fill us with an awareness of the people around us so we can take care of them and love them the way you loved us. That's the goal. Speak to us tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. All right. Let's look at Luke chapter 5. We're, come on. We're a Bible reading church. Without the word of God, we got nada. Okay, let's look at verse 17, Luke chapter 5, verse 17. And this is a day that a man that was paralyzed, we don't know how long, but at the end of the story, a man that couldn't walk was healed. When I think about a paralytic, and we don't know why, why he was paralyzed, but people get paralyzed because of neck injuries, nerve damage, brain injuries, or maybe they were born paralyzed. But something happened that he was no longer walking. And he probably thought, for the rest of my life, I'll be carried everywhere. There's no hope for me because my situation is hopeless. I've never, ever seen someone paralyzed walk again. It wasn't like I saw someone with cancer, and I, but I've also seen someone with cancer recover and get healed. But I've never, ever seen someone paralyzed. He had no reference point of anyone being healed or, or walking again. And I really believe there was no reference point in all of Scripture. It wasn't like he never seen it. It's never been documented that a paralyzed man ever walked. So there wasn't a biography he could have read or a story he could have been encouraged with is there anyone out there that was paralyzed that now walks? And the answer was none. No one. He could have settled, and he probably did settle. I'll never walk again. But at the end of this story, we see a man that was paralyzed walk again. The reason this story's in the Bible is because Jesus specializes in hopeless and dead situations. Just because you haven't seen it happen in your family, in your neighborhood, or in your life, doesn't mean that God won't do it for you. 
We serve a God that does the impossible. He's a supernatural God. He creates something out of nothing. He created the heavens and the earth with just a word. And what God is saying, there's no one I can't reach. There's no one I can't save. There's no one I can't deliver. There's no one I can't heal. I am almighty God. And God is raising our faith tonight. Not in people, not in our condition, not in our problems, but in Jesus. It's real. I see people for 18 years get delivered and set free from demons, get set free from addictions. I've seen marriages that were divorced for years get reconciled. I've seen lost people that are murderers come to Jesus and become even leaders in our church. I've seen the impossible. I've seen people get healed from diseases and cancer, and I've seen God do miracles. That's why we're here. We're not here because we're part of a religion. We are here because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and he's also the, also the resurrection and the life, and that means he also raises the dead. He gives eternal life, and he forgives sinners and gives them a brand new opportunity. Let's give God some praise. Come on. He's the only one that can save you, deliver you, set you free. He's the answer for our world. So this day starts off probably like any other day. But one day in verse 17, while Jesus was teaching, now every miracle that God does first starts off with teaching and preaching. What that means is God's word is seed for a miracle. Being exposed to the teachings of Christ exposes you to the power of Christ. Before God does a miracle, he teaches. Why does he teach? To build your faith. You're right now in the right atmosphere. You could be at home. You could be watching Top Gun movie or Jurassic Park or Netflix. But no, you're tuning in online. You're here in the house of God. And anything can happen in an atmosphere like this because I'm not teaching. It's God's spirit that's teaching. Jesus is teaching. This, this story begins with teaching. Your next miracle begins with hearing, teaching. Because what you expose yourself to, you build faith in. You are becoming what you're hearing. Jesus is now teaching, not for the sake of teaching to hear himself. He's teaching to build faith so people can receive what he's given. Jesus tells you what he wants to give you to build your faith. He's for you. He's not against you. He gives you his promises so you can receive it, have faith, believe, and get a breakthrough. But everything starts with teaching. Paul said this in Romans 1.16, he goes, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. What he was saying, I'm not, I'm not ashamed of talking about Jesus, that he died for our sins, rose from the dead. Because in that simple message, the power to save is released. And unless there's teaching and unless there's preaching, there's no miracles, there's no healing, there's no salvation. God is raising up a people that don't have opinions, but they have the commands of God. See, your opinions and, so, and how you look at it doesn't fix anybody. We don't need our opinions. Come on, we don't need to hear from a man. We need to hear what God is saying about the situation because that produces life. So he's teaching. One day while Jesus was teaching. Some Pharisees and teachers of religious law were sitting nearby. It seemed that these men showed up from every village in all Galilee and Judea, as well as from Jerusalem. Now, while Jesus is teaching, there's resistance in the room. You have to understand this, that there will be resistance. These Pharisees, the word Pharisee means the separated ones. Say it with me, the separated ones. 
So they looked at themselves, and this was their goal, to separate from everything that could make them unholy. And they would live a life of total separation from anything that could make them unholy. But this is what they thought. We're the only ones that God loves, and God doesn't love anyone, no one else because they're not separated like we are. These were what we call religious people. Religious people don't love Religious people show off. When you're around religious people, they make you feel like you're nothing. But when you're around spiritual people, they make you feel like you're amazing. That you're valuable. That you're important. That God loves you. They used to flaunt how religious and pious they were. But this is the problem. They knew the Bible, they knew the law, but they didn't know God. Religious people don't, aren't used to see people get saved. It's real people. People that know, Lord, if it wasn't for your mercy, if it wasn't for your grace, and if it wasn't for you reaching out to me, I wouldn't be saved. I would not be born again. I'd have no purpose. Thank you, Jesus. What you did for me, do it for somebody else. So they showed up, these men, these Pharisees, they showed up to criticize. Not to believe and receive. They showed up to criticize. They showed up to judge. They showed up to accuse. But Jesus did not let these people distract him from his mission or conquer his love. Now why is that important for you? Because there's people that Satan uses to distract you while you're doing ministry. And they'll be in the house. And they'll be doing ministry with you. And they'll be sitting in your seats. And before you know it, you, fall, you lost focus of your vision. And you start talking about how they're offensive and what they did to you. And you're losing your focus. You're losing your love. You've been conquered by hate. You've been conquered by offense. You've been conquered by the Pharisees. This is one of the spirits that will stop you from experiencing what God has for you. But that's part of life. There's people when you're starting to do ministry will just get in the way and throw a bomb on you. It's, and, I, and I said, well, are they from the devil? This is what happens. People get influenced by the devil. It's not that they're the devil, but the devil uses people to speak into your life while you're teaching, while you're doing ministry. If you don't watch it, they can get you distracted, they can get you offended, they can get you quit, and they get you out of position. And before you know it, all the paralyzed people remain paralyzed because your love was conquered by a Pharisee. Now, when your love is conquered by a Pharisee, this is what happens. You become one. So instead of looking to save people, you're looking to judge people. So your story no longer is ministry. Your story is how offensive people are. So the very thing that, you, that, that hits you, that hurts you, offended you, when you receive it, you become one of them. So this was dangerous. They were really trying to convert Jesus. They were trying to fight everything he taught. They were trying to accuse Jesus. Imagine trying to accuse Jesus. Much less they trying to accuse you. If they found fault with Jesus, religious people will find fault with you. So don't let one of their accusations get you out of position. Come on, get you, come on. The, conquer your love and before you know it you don't have a testimony of what God has done you have a testimony of what they did to you so they were traveling from every village you hear Jesus coming they weren't coming they were just coming to watch and be entertained they were not coming to receive a miracle but look what the Bible says and the Lord's healing power was strongly with Jesus what was there? Healing power. Saving power. Deliverance power. Jesus' healing power. The Lord's healing power was strong with Jesus. You know what that means? He's the same today, yesterday, and forever. And I'm going to give you a secret. He lives in you. 
the power to heal is still strong today in this church. Jesus is showing up not to judge you, but he's showing up to heal you, to forgive you, to save you, to put you back on stable ground, to restore you, to give you victory. It's not over because healing power is strong here. Jesus and healing power come together. Healing physically, healing mentally, healing relationally, healing emotionally, it's all here. Someone's going to get healed tonight. I'm going to declare right now, someone's going to get healed tonight. You're not going to leave here paralyzed by your fears, paralyzed by your past, paralyzed by your shame, paralyzed, come on, by demons, come on. You're not going to be paralyzed by what they said and the abuse that you went through and the drugs that you've taken. There's a God that's ready to heal you tonight and give him all the glory. He's a healer. The presence of healing is strong on Jesus. Say with me, Jesus is a healer. This is your moment to be healed. Now this is what happened. There must, they must have heard about Jesus' healing power. Jesus just came out and said, where is, this, where is this happening? What time frame? Well, Jesus in Luke chapter 4, which is a chapter right before this, went to the wilderness and he was tempted by the devil. But yet he didn't fall in any of the, the temptations. He overcame every temptation that we face. He faced it, but he didn't get overcome by it. And he overcame the temptation to help you overcome your temptation. He faced everything you're facing and conquered it to give you his victory. That's what he did. So he comes out of there, and the first, one, one of the first things he does is a miraculous fishing trip. They were fishing all night. They couldn't catch anything. Jesus just says, hey, look on the other side, bro. Your nets are on the left side. Put them on the right side. I guarantee you there's fish in there. We've been fishing all night. Don't worry about it. Just do what I tell you. See, you're so focused on a method and God just says, obey me. Stop trying to figure out the scientific results of how it's supposed to happen. And God says, I understand. I created science. I created the fish. So I don't want you to get so caught up in how it's going to happen. Just obey me and watch it happen. I'm not giving you instruction to tease you. I'm giving you instruction so you could get some breakthroughs in your life. So you could do some powerful ministry. And if you can't obey him, you'll never see nothing. Drop it. Drop the net. And then they catch all these amazing fish. The next scene we see is Jesus sees a leper. And this was another incurable disease, and he heals him. So now the story is out. There's a man that's healing lepers, providing supernaturally, and he's in our town right now. It must have gone far in that town, around the region, because people from all over were coming, including the Pharisees. So they heard through the grapevine that Jesus was healing people and handling impossible situations. They hear about it. Some guys get together and they start thinking, if he's healing, let's get some. If he's delivering, let's go ahead and get some deliverance. If he's restoring, let's get some restoration. If he's giving joy and peace, if that's what he's doing, let's show up and get it. So they began to look at themselves and say, well, I don't need healing. But we do know someone that needs healing is our friend. He's paralyzed. See, God wants us to be aware of the condition of people around us. He doesn't just want you to use your faith for your breakthrough. He wants you to use your faith for someone else's breakthrough. There's somebody right now that they're so down on out, they don't have faith to believe for their breakthrough. They don't have faith to believe for salvation. They don't have faith to get set free. But they could borrow your faith. So listen, look at this. Are you ready to let someone else borrow your faith so they could get some breakthroughs? Come on. All these years that you've been hearing the word and building your faith just to sit. 
God says, I, I did not create you just to sit. I created, I created you to do great things. Come on, this is your moment to get involved in ministry. This is your moment to bring people into the presence of God. This is your moment to see God raise the paralytic. This is your moment to see your family saved. But God is saying, let's get involved with this. So now, some men, someone say some men. There's three basic characters or, or characters. There's the paralytic, there's some men, and, there, and then there's some Pharisees, and obviously the fourth character is Jesus. Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a sleeping mat. So they brought him on what always carried him was a sleeping mat. Why did they carry him on a sleeping mat? That's where he slept. That was his bed. So they carried on. We don't know how long a walk it was, but we do know this, that they had enough compassion to help the guy. Your job is not to para judge the paralyzed. Your job is to bring the paralyzed. Stop judging people's walk or they can't walk. Stop wasting time. Come on, you got enough stuff to work on in your own life. Why don't you let God, come on, God uses regular people just like you and me and just like these men to do great works. Is there anybody that has compassion for somebody? All I'm saying, don't get so caught up in your life that you're not aware of ministry all around you. So now, they bring, they're carrying, someone say, someone say carrying. That means they had faith to sacrifice for somebody else. And they weren't carrying a man that could walk. They were carrying dead weight. And I could hear the conversation. And maybe the guy's name was Philip. I like to give people names. I say, Philip, we heard something. We heard, <laughs> I'm telling you, Philip, it's crazy. And we were just talking about it. It's thunder happening right now. I don't know what's happening. Is that outside? Oh, praise God. All right. God, come on, this is your moment. God's ready to do something. I really believe that God's ready to do something. That could just be a little prophetic thunder. Come on, that's right before the rain. That's right before the breakthrough. God is ready to do something. Come on, I'm ready to rain on your family. I'm ready to rain on your church. God is saying, I'm not teaching you today to teach you. I'm teaching you because I'm empowering you to do and receive everything I have for you. Give God just one more praise. Come on, it's happening now. There's not a soundtrack. This is God moving in your life. Okay. Healing power strong. Say with me. Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on mat. They tried to take him inside to see Jesus. So they brought him a long ways, carrying this dead weight. But the conversation before that, I would love to hear it. Hey, Philip. <laughs> I know you, you fell off that ladder, to, you know, 10 years ago and broke your neck. And you're paralyzed and you never walked again. But we heard through the grapevine that someone is coming. His name's Jesus and he's healing people. So, Philip, I just need you to give us permission to take you to him. Because we're believing, right now we're going to use our faith. We believe that Jesus, that Jesus, if he healed that leper, he could heal you. I know there's never been anybody that's been paralyzed that had been healed that we know about in the history of the world. But you're going to be the first one. And we believe it so much. I just want you to kick back. Let us take you there. Let us get you in the presence of Jesus because if we could just get you in his presence, the healing power will be there. And we're believing that today's your last day of being paralyzed. We're believing... It's your last day of being addicted. It's your last day of being angry. It's your last day of being confused. It's your last day. Come on. It's your last day of being a failure. It's your last day of being fearful and full of anxiety. This is your day for you to get healed of your paralysis. Today is your day, Philip. <laughs> Philip said, really? And you carry me? No one's ever carried me that far. You know I'm pretty heavy because I don't exercise. He goes, don't you worry. We love you. 
Don't you worry about your condition. We're not here to judge you. We're here to help you. We're not here to show off. We're here to serve you. Come on. We're here to love somebody. God is ready to reach the most impossible people. And God is saying, don't you stop interceding for them. That's how you bring them to me. Don't you stop praying for them. Don't you stop inviting them. Don't you stop having Bible studies with them. Don't you stop loving them. Don't you stop blessing them. Because I'm ready to, I'm ready to touch them. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So they're carrying them. And I, I know they don't have AC, and they don't have a car to put them, a Suburban to put them in the back. They're carrying them. And it's awkward rate. Wait, wait. It's okay, bro. We're going to drop you, but it's okay. We'll get you there. But you're getting heavy, man. I didn't know you were so heavy. Guys, you don't have to do this. No, we do. Because if there's an answer for your problem, we're going to take you there. And I know you've been defeated by your circumstance. So we're not going to be talking about, we're not going to use your faith. We're going to use our faith. You just kick back for the ride. Come on, there's some people that you're going to get in your car. Come on, you're going to bring the church tomorrow night. And God is saying, because I put them on your heart, you bring them and I'll touch them. So now let's keep going. But they tried to take him aside. To Jesus, but they couldn't reach him because of the crowd. So now they're running into the first obstacle. The thought probably was, we got the address where Jesus is at, and we'll just take him right there in and put him before Jesus, and Jesus will heal him. That's the picture I got. But it doesn't turn out like the picture. Life rarely turns out like the picture. Because you, usually in your picture, there's no obstacles. You just see a successful business. You don't see all the work and all the trials and all the tribulations. You see, oh, man, Pastor Marco, I'm going to be, I'm going to have a church like him. But you just see the end result. You don't see all the work, all the trials, all the demons, all the resistance. Come on, all the Pharisees that are coming against you. It's not easy. People leaving you and turning their back on you. It just happens. It's part of ministry. I know you have a dream, but there's going to be some obstacles. Don't think you're just going to get involved helping people and dragging them out of hell and you're not going to have any resistance. And your major resistance will be people. Who's going to be your major resistance? The crowds. Crowds, people. Don't let your story be, I tried to get them there, but the crowd stopped me. I tried to do ministry, but the leader stopped me. I, I tried, but I had so many problems. See, don't let the crowds become your excuse. See, we need some people that have faith that want to help some people that are willing to get through the excuses and find a way or make a way. But there's one thing for sure. We're not taking you back. You way too much. You know what we're saying? We've come too far to go back now. I know right now we thought we are just going to drop you off in front of Jesus. But we're going to have to put in some extra effort. We're going to have to climb right now. But there's one thing for sure. By the time we're done, you're going to be in the presence of Jesus. I'll do everything we can to put you in the presence of Jesus. You will not be ignored. So this is what they did. They tried to get through the front door. They couldn't. And just check how selfish the crowd was. Just think about that. The, the guys are sweating. I know they're sweating. And the paralyzed man is like, oh, my God, where are we at? Crowds are, are, crowds are there, and no one's making a way. Oh, you got, got, come on, right here. Come on in. They're, like, pushing them out, like, psh, psh, we're looking. Do you, have a, do you need a miracle? Not really. I'm just being entertained. But you're messing up my flow right here. I got a good seat. There's some Christians, all they want to do is be entertained. They just want a good seat. 
They're, come on, they're fans, but they're not, come on, they're not servants, they're not ministers. They just go from one fan experience to another fan experience, but there's some people that are serious because they're saying, I'm desperate, and if God doesn't move in my life right now, I'm going to remain in the condition I'm in. Is there anybody that's desperate for your breakthrough and desperate for the breakthrough of another person? That's what keeps you pure. That's what keeps you powerful. Is purpose, and purpose is people. Don't let your obstacle be your excuse. We can't get them in. And I hear the conversation. Um, so what are we going to do? And I can hear them saying, hey, we are not taking him back in the same condition he came. He's going to go back walking. And we're just one step away. I know we can't get him through the front door. Why don't we just take him on the roof? And we'll just break open the roof. I know he's heavy. It's going to be a little harder because we have to lift up the dead weight on top of the roof. But we love him, right? Didn't we come here with a vision? And I believe that vision came from God. And I believe Jesus is here. And I don't believe this is a coincidence. I don't believe you're a coincidence that you're here tonight. And I know maybe right now you need to push a little farther because the breakthrough that you're looking for is not as easy as you thought. But God is right now pulling some faith from you because God's saying, I'm ready to do something greater in your life. But you're going to have to push a little harder. You have to climb a little higher. You're going to have to come on, do something that's unorthodox because don't worry about looking like a fool. You need a breakthrough. God wants the people that look like, are willing to look like a fool to help somebody else. Be careful that you're not trying to fit in so much, you, God can't even use you. Well, no one's ever, but what if I break the guy's roof and he starts getting mad? Who cares? Fix his roof. Right now he's paralyzed and his answer inside that room. If I can't get it through the front door, open up the roof. So they started pulling the tile out. <laughs> crazy. And I can see Jesus like looking up, all kinds of dust is falling and hay and all kinds of stuff. Daylight. They probably thought it was a pigeon or something. But it was these guys. And they probably heard all the commotion. Hey, push him up. He's heavy. Almost lost him. <laughs> While Jesus is teaching. They're willing to break all kinds of protocol, but we won't get him in front of, we won't get him right in front of Jesus. So they break open the roof. <laughs> I don't even know how the pulley that they did. I, because if it was me, he's in trouble. Because as soon as he's going down, I go, bro, you're paralyzed anyways. You're already broken that. You're going to just drop you, man. You're too heavy. You need a miracle no matter what. You might need a bigger miracle after I'm done with you. But you're falling and you're going in front of Jesus. <laughs> That's probably what happened with me. You wouldn't want me dropping you in front of Jesus because you'd be hurting. <laughs> I just said, drop him. It doesn't matter. He should get healed anyway. If he dies, you can resurrect him. <laughs> Do you believe? I believe. Let's go. No, it's good. Well, anyways, they dropped him right in front of Jesus. Right in front of Jesus. You know what they were saying? You are not going to ignore my need. There's a time in your life that you got to bring people to the altar. Come on. You got to bring people to Holy Wars. You got to bring people to your DG. You got to bring people, come on, on the front or second row. You got to bring people, come on, you got to bring them. And what you're saying, I came here for a breakthrough for my sister and my brother. They might not want to come up right now, but I'm going to bring them forward so they can get in the presence of God. They might not have the faith right now, but I'm going to get them to the point that their need cannot be. Be ignored by the church, by the leaders, by God, by everybody. I might even start shouting and doing some unorthodox stuff. But for sure, I'm getting my breakthrough. So they brought it to a point. It's not going to be ignored. Do you know there's some breakthroughs in your life you got to like wait in line for? What a shame that you need prayer and because it took more than 10 minutes, you walk out the door with your sickness. And you walked out with the, your lust. And you walked out with your demons. Where you should have just waited 10 more minutes and get your breakthrough. 
Don't let the obstacles be your excuse. Let's see. So now Jesus, he does something interesting. They put him right in front of Jesus. And Jesus does not say this, be healed. He says something different. He looks at the paralyzed man. Hey, Philip. I just gave him that name, so don't, don't be looking in scripture for it. I just gave... <laughs> hey, Philip. Look at me. Your sins are forgiven. And, and I'm sure that it's th the, the men that brought him say, whoa, 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 whoa. We didn't come for that. <laughs> He's still paralyzed. But what Jesus saw, what his greatest need was. His greatest need wasn't physical healing. His greatest need was forgiveness of his sins. What would be the purpose to have two perfectly healed legs and walk all the way into hell? Could it be that you're more interested in a temporary life and you don't, you're not prepared for the eternal life? This time on earth is a very short time. The most important thing that happens on this earth is you place your faith in Jesus. You're forgiven of your sins. You're set free. God erases your sin. He exes them out because he died in your place and shed his blood so that you can have eternal life. God is interested in saving people, then healing them. So Jesus dealt with his greatest need, not just his heartfelt need. Now, of course, we as a church, we use heartfelt need to help people get to their greatest need. That means we have food for the hungry. So they would come and receive food. That's their heartfelt need. So they could reach, get their greatest need, which is forgiveness of sins and eternal life in faith in Jesus. We got a school in Kenya. So we could take orphans in and train them and teach them. Their heartfelt need is they need parents. They need someone to love them, of course, and we're going to do that. But the greatest need that we're looking to meet is that they know Jesus as their Lord and Savior because in heaven they'll never be orphans and they'll be with us forever and there'll be no sickness and there'll be no pain. Our brothers and sisters are on the streets and we're going to meet them right where they're at. That's called heartfelt needs. That's what we do as a church. We find out someone's heartfelt need so we could get them to the point where they could get their greatest need, which is forgiveness and eternal life. Now, this is what happened. After Jesus says, you're forgiven of your sins, the Pharisees just get all upset because they went there to criticize and get offended, and they sure did. And they said this to the one another. It's so interesting. You got men, regular men that are bringing someone to Jesus and their conversations are totally different than these religious people. Two people in the same room, different thinking and different conversations. And they're going to get different results. Those Pharisees, because of their thinking and their critical spirit and being judgmental, they're going to leave in a worse condition than they came. But this man and his friends are going to leave in a better condition than they came. They're going to leave with a story. They're going to leave with a testimony that even 2,000 years later, we're still sharing. Because there was a few men that decided to reach out to someone that was hopeless and say, we're not going to leave you in that hopeless pit that you're in. Because if there's an answer, we'll do everything we can to get you in front of Jesus. I want you to understand, maybe the person that brought you has been bugging you. But I want you to get this, they love you. And they're concerned about your soul. That's why they do it. So they're all mad. Well, who can forgive sins but God? They missed it. Because they knew the law, but they didn't know God was in their midst. And instead of receiving forgiveness and receiving what Jesus was offering and receiving healing, they were being critical of what God was doing. Of course only God can forgive sins. And Jesus was saying, I am God. And you know what's so cool about Jesus? Even though they were critical and negative, he's still trying to reach them. So this is what he does to prove that he could forgive sins. Because the biggest miracle is the forgiveness of sins, not healing his body. Because one day his body would die 
He will never walk again on this earth with his earthly body. But he would have eternal life. And he would have a body that's incorruptible, that will never break, that will never get sick, that will never grow old. That's eternity. And Jesus was making sure he was prepared for eternity before he healed his body. Because if he, didn't, if he healed his, his, his spiritual paralysis, maybe what caused him to be paralyzed in the first place was a lifestyle that led to paralysis. So God is more interested in healing you on the inside because if he doesn't fix you on the inside, you're going to keep doing things that get you in the same pit that God took you out of. So God is saying, stop looking at just the temporal things. I want to do the spiritual thing. If I can set you free on the inside, I can set you free. Come on, in your marriage, I can set you free. In your finances, I can establish you to do something great. But I'm focusing on the inside first. So now, the Pharisees said, man, who's, who do they, this is what they said. Who does he think he is? Like, what? And Jesus says, he goes, why? Because Jesus knew what they were thinking. Jesus knew what? God knows what we're thinking too. Jesus knew what we're thinking. He goes, why are you questioning me? You should be hearing from me, learning from me, receiving from me, not questioning me, but just to prove to you. That I have the power to forgive sins. So Jesus healed this paralytic because of two reasons. Number one, because of the faith of the men that brought him to Jesus. And number two, he healed them to prove himself to his naysayers. To build their faith to believe themselves. Maybe they weren't the only ones that were negative and doubting in that room. But Jesus saying, I'm going to prove to you that I forgive sins by healing him right now. And Jesus gives them three commands. And he says, stand up. Pick up your mat and go home. And I could just imagine the silence in that room at this point. They go, uh-oh. The paralytic is thinking, really? This is my moment? The Pharisees are saying, he ain't going to stand. And we're going to prove he ain't nobody. And then the people that brought him to Jesus were thinking, I hope we were right. And the crowd was just observing to see what was going to happen. And the moment Jesus says you're forgiven, he was immediately forgiven. And the moment Jesus says stand up. He stood up, picked up his mat, and he went home. You know what he's saying? Right now he's telling someone, this is your moment to stand up. Come on, stand up out of the addiction. Come on, stand up out of that depression. Come on, it's not time for you to lay down and continue being associated with that mat. You pick up that mat, the thing that used to have authority over you. I'm commanded for you to have authority over that thing. That means if you have a marriage problem, pick up your mat and start a marriage ministry. Come on, if you're addicted, pick up that mat of addiction and go to recovery and help people get set free. What God is saying, if you used to be an ex-gang member and God set you free, stand up out of that gang life. God is saying, stand up, pick up your mat and go into the streets and save some people. That when you're safe, exact condition. If you're sick, God is saying stand up and be healed so you can start a healing ministry. God is saying we used to have authority over you. We'll no longer have authority over you. Give God some praise. Let's all stand up. And he says, go home. What did he tell him? You know what he's saying there? I want you to go home and reach your family. Because the people that will believe in God the most are the people that just seen the change in your life. Who did you have? How are you walking? How did you break that cycle? How did you overcome? How did you become so nice? You were so mean. Why are you smiling? You used to be depressed and suicidal. What happened to you? Why are you out right now driving? You used to be, 
You used to be paralyzed by fear. You didn't even want to go outside. What are you doing in that church? You didn't even like crowds. What are you, what, que pasó? What's, what's going on with you? And you're going to have to tell them, I'm going to tell you, I just had one encounter with Jesus and he changed my life. I am walking now. Come on, I have joy now. I could praise God now. I could jump now. I could go where God tells me to go now. And right now, I'm coming to you, mama. I'm coming to you, dad. I'm coming to you, friends. I'm going home with a message of what Jesus did for me. God is saying right now, this is your moment not to leave here the same way that you came in, but it's time. This is your moment to get your miracle, to be set free from your paralysis and go home and tell them what Jesus did for you. Give God one more praise. He's worthy. Say with, tell your neighbor, this is your moment. Say with me, this is your moment. Okay. I'm going to give you an opportunity. When Jesus says your sins are forgiven, your past is erased. It's X'd out. It's more than whited out because if you put white out and you take the white out, it's still in there. It's totally removed. It's no longer associated with you. And the penalty for the wrong you've done is no longer over your head. That means you no longer need to live in guilt, in shame. What I love about Jesus, he truly gives people a brand new start people might not give you a brand new start because of the mistakes you've made, but this is what I've learned. All of us have messed up. There's nobody here that hasn't messed up. And some of us have been doing it longer, so you're just better at, you're just better at messing up. And maybe you're a little more hard-headed. But this is your moment. Aren't you glad that God deals and helps and saves those that everybody else gave up on. Come on. He specializes. The greater the tragedy, the greater the pain, the greater the suffering, the greater the addiction, the greater the testimony. Come on. God is ready to use your life. Your best half is after this moment. This is your moment. But if you're saying, Pastor, I want to be first miracle. I want to be forgiven of my sins. I want to be saved. You might even have a, a pretty good life, but this is a problem. This would be the scripture over your life. What is the profit of man to gain the whole world, lose his soul? That word forgiveness also means to be made whole. That it's an implication there that if you aren't saved, you're not whole, you're not complete, you're empty, there's something missing. And you might be thinking what's missing is and you fill in the blank, if it's not Jesus, whatever you're filling in the blank is going to disappoint you. What's missing is my girlfriend. What's missing is my husband. What's missing is my wife. What's missing is my car. What's missing is a house. What's missing is clothes. What's missing is food. You know what I'm mentioning? I'm mentioning the stuff that we talk about. What's missing is more drugs. What's missing? I need more drugs. That's, that's what's missing. If I had more drugs, I'd be good. Would you really? If I just had more sex, I, man, that, that's what's missing. I need more, I need more sex. <laughs> that's not going to fix you. It's not gonna, I need more lust. I, I, I need more porn. <laughs> it's not going to fix you. If God would just fix this, I'd be whole. God says, nah, when I fix you, you'll be whole. Stop, stop trying to get me to fix your symptoms and I want to fix you. And if I fix you, I can fix your sy symptoms and they'll be solid forever. There's nobody here that God can't reach. Jesus' healing and saving power is strong tonight. It's here. Don't be like the Pharisees that were just there to criticize and watch. Be like these men that are saying, today's my day. We're going to leave the past behind. No more hiding anything. You'll never ever get set free from something you're hiding. Who cares if someone knows that you messed up? God already knows. 
Don't be so concerned with what people think that you personally can't get a breakthrough. Like, I don't care. I just want you to be real. God doesn't either. He said, I didn't come for a whole bunch of goody two-shoes that never messed up and trying to fake it through. I came for some people that know they messed up and need some help. Come on. I need some help. Come on. I need some help. I need some help. Now, if that's you, you want forgiveness, you want a new start, you want to get set free, you want to be saved, you want eternal life, leave your seat. Come up here right now. Leave your seat. Come up here. This is your moment to stand right in front. I know it's going to be a climb, and I know you have to, might have to get through a few people, but you got to say, excuse me, excuse me. Come on, I'm coming through the roof right now because I'm going to be in the presence of God. If there's a breakthrough there, and there's salvation there, and there's freedom there, and there's deliverance there, you may be more abused, but you don't have to be, come on, you don't have to be abused for the rest of your life. It's time for you to get healed and set free. Come on, online. Come on, get ready. Raise your hand. Stand up in your car. Just stand up right now and get your breakthrough. Forgiveness is there. Strong healing power is there. Come on, church. Come on, church. This is what you live for. God's ready to do some miracles. His healing and saving power is strong tonight. They're still coming. This is your moment. This is your moment. Come on, church. Let's praise God. Let's glorify God. What we praise Him for, He does more. Maybe right now you need to bring somebody up here. Come on, ask somebody. Let's go up there right now. You know, come on, you need. They might be scared, right? They might be paralyzed and they can't move. And they're saying, I know, come on. And just say, come on, let's go up there. And as you say, come on, they're going to say, okay, let's go. Come on, let's go. I just need a little push. Come on, they're still coming, church. We're not going to be a church that's so caught up in time that we're not letting time for God to move and fill people with His Spirit. Come on, the devil is losing. Come on, some of His workers. Come on, so come on, He's losing. Some of His children right now. Say you're going to take your hands off their minds, off their families, every spirit of schizophrenia. I command you to leave them in the name of Jesus. Spirit of addiction, spirit of group you right now you need not only salvation you need a healing too a physical healing you need God to touch a physical part of your body I want you to come up real quick too because we're going to pray for you right now in the name of Jesus come on God's healing power is strong right now Come on, God's healing power is strong right now. We're going to hear some testimonies after tonight. Come on, they're still coming. They're still coming. Come on, church. An altar full of souls being saved through just a little teaching. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on. God's called you to ministry. You're going to do it. God's not just going to set you free. He's going to, come on, he's calling you to go home, to reach others. All right. Proud of you guys. God bless you. Love you. God bless you, honey. Love you. Love you. Let's do this, okay? Now God's going to forgive you. He's calling you to follow him. Say it with me. God's calling me to follow him. Are you ready to follow him? Are you ready to join God's army? Are you ready to start winning? Come on, if you've been serving the devil, you've been doing a lot of losing. Let's serve the champion. Come on, let's follow him. It might not be easy, but it's worth it. You win. Okay, fo- someone say follow him. Tomorrow night, follow him to church again. Let's get the second dose of what God is doing, please. God's doing this in doses. 
Third night, come follow Sunday, follow him. This weekend, let's follow him. Get ready. How many need healing right now? Raise your hand. Okay. All right. They're going to lay hands on you. The Bible said we lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. How many want forgiveness of your sins and a brand new start today? Raise your hand. How many want freedom from an addiction? Raise your hand. Come on. You, 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 been, you need to get set free from something. Say, Man, I got to stop this. I got. Okay. And the reason I'm asking you to raise your hands, when you're raising your hands, you're saying, I'm serious. I don't care what nobody, I don't care if nobody sees me jump through the ceiling right now. How is it going to look, us going through the ceiling? Well, it's, I don't care how it looks. That's not the goal to look good doing it. The goal is to get saved and get them healed, okay? We love you. Come on, we love you. Come on. We love you. Come on, it's time to go forward. This is your moment. Let's raise our hands. Oh, Fire. Fall now, Lord. Rain down on your people. Holy Spirit, fill your people with your love. We give you all the honor and the glory. We worship you. You're the only Savior. You're the only Deliverer. You're the only source of eternal life. You're holy. Thank you, Jesus. You're the star of that story, not the men, not the Pharisees, not the paralyzed man. You're the only one with the power. We give you all the honor. Repeat after me. Say, say Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. I receive it. I know that forgiveness, my forgiveness cost you suffering and your life. Forgive me for taking that for granted. You shed your blood for me. You love me so much. The price for my sins was death. And you loved me so much. You died for me. And you rose from the dead. I repent of my sins tonight. Heal me of the paralysis. Heal my life. Heal my mind from everything that stops me from walking with you and being productive and fruitful and a minister. Save me. I receive your salvation and the free gift of eternal life. I receive the healing of my mind, my body, my family, my relationships. Today is my moment. I'm saved. I'm healed. I'm free. Use me to go back and share my faith with others as they see your salvation and the change in me. I'm free, I'm saved, I'm healed, and I'm walking, and I'm running for you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for not giving up on me, not judging me. Thank you, Lord.